is. Matthew Ford of Oak Street. Um, I'd like to thank the council for allowing me to speak today and the mayor for attending. Um, and I don't say that lightly. I do uh, really appreciate uh, the mayor attending. You know, I, I work up in Scranton and I went out to their city council meetings. We had a lot of questions that we wanted to ask the uh, mayor of Scranton when they were considering the commuter tax and he refused to attend and respond to questions. And, uh, you know, I would like to say that, you know, I'm kind of disappointed in the actions of those behind me and um, there's a lot of things being said that you know are degrading to the council here and you know admonishing them for their behavior but I don't see a lot of professionalism behind me and it's tough to uh, get some real change when you're not exhibiting the behaviors that you expect out of your leaders now with that being said though I'm also kind of disappointed because I feel that I've brought a pretty compelling argument myself forward in the past couple months and I haven't been pushy about it. I've requested six months, you know, hey, can we revisit this in six months? Can you sit down the five of you, come back in two months and tell me what you at least think of the idea of police lapel cameras? Not only that, I've provided uh, links to other communities that are doing the same. I've provided links to grants where it could be funded. I've provided links to uh, places where the uh, items can be purchased and, you know, employed by the uh, police department. And, my frustration is that I haven't gotten a response. I haven't gotten somebody to say, yes, we'll discuss it. And I understand that there are some small legal challenges to this. And uh, now we have a new city attorney, and I asked Mr. Henry uh, if you'd kind of look into the legalities of it. I can tell you that I have looked into the legalities of it. And the major stumbling block is whether or not it's an invasion of privacy. And the courts have ruled very clearly that anything that happens within a public area is not uh, assumed to have a right to privacy. Uh, so all the cameras would be uh, completely legal in any public space. Pennsylvania, in particular, is a uh, two-party consent state. Uh, so to uh, record somebody inside their own uh, residence or in a private area, we would have to get their consent, which would be very simple before the officer, uh, you know, entered the home. Uh, you know, say, hey, you know, just to let you know we are recording. They would have the option to decline, at which point the officer would then have to turn off the camera, of course. Uh, but you know, uh, I live. Uh, right down as I said on Oak Street and just uh, yesterday there was a shooting a uh, police officer had to uh, discharge his firearm uh, in regards to a situation he was responding to and um, it was less than a quarter mile from my home so I wasn't going to talk about this for two months but it kind of uh, is impossible to ignore you know with the recent events and now uh, in, in most cases you know the officer is very much in the right and sometimes it's the you know person who got shot that was in the right and it's very tough for us to tell, especially immediately after a situation has unfolded, there's a lot of chaos in the scene. And like I said, we don't know who is in the right and who is in the wrong. But one thing that we can say without question of any scenario where a firearm has been discharged is that the person who was acting responsibly and within the law wishes that that was recorded. And by not moving forward and at least discussing the possibility of adding lapel cameras as a utility to our officers, we're denying them that right. And now we have an officer who's going to be scrutinized and criticized for something that, you know, he could have been well within his rights, and I don't think that he really deserves that stress to go through. I think he should go home at night knowing, hey, I did my job, it's on camera, I was right, and that's what the law is. But we can't have that discussion, now it's going to go on, you know, witnesses' reports, which we all know are going to be conflicting. And it causes uh, you know, a lot of confusion and it creates the possibility for people to litigate and sue the city and cost us a lot of money. I've mentioned before that we can get these body cameras done for under $200,000 for a uh, total of like three or four years. It's a very affordable place. We spend millions on the Hawkeye camera system. And once again, I say, are our parking garages more important than our police officers? And so my question today, out of all this, is just simply, what does a citizen need to do to present a coherent argument that will get taken, taken up in a meaningful way by counsel and at least consider and discuss? Yes, sir. We've actually been looking into this with our ID man. I mean, do you need to look? Uh, I do not. Um, and I believe also Bill Barrett's calling about this. So, uh, so it's something that's definitely on, on the uh, <coughs> discussion table. It's just a matter of making sure it's, it's, it's something we can do. Sure. The funding's available and it's also something we need to discuss with the PBA. Sure. And, and would it be possible for me to get uh, the results of the you know investigation into the possibility, say, in February or something like what that after it's completed. What is included? Most important is something we need, again, is something the administration will discuss with the, the police department. 
Certainly, and, and Mr. Mayor, how would you recommend I track that, and, you know, so that I give my response or you know request the response in time? I, mean, I don't want to rush anything, but I don't want to leave it, you know, by the wayside either. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll give you details. I'm sure we won't give you confidential details. Of course. Um, just call my office and leave your name and number, and I'll make sure you're I or something get back. Thank you.